Data Federation allows you to unify your data across multiple databases and even data sources. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to get started with MongoDB Atlas Data Federation, integrating your data from MongoDB and Azure Blob Storage for one unified data management solution. To follow along with this tutorial, there's a couple prerequisites you need to have. So first of all, it's going to be a MongoDB Atlas account with a cluster setup and the sample data loaded. Next, you're going to need a Microsoft Azure account with a storage account and container setup. If you don't have this, I'll link below the steps in the Microsoft documentation to get set up. Next, you're going to need the Azure CLI to interact with your storage account and container. And lastly, we're going to need some way to actually view our virtual database we'll set up with the Data Federation. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using Node.js. So you're going to need Node.js 18 or higher and an NPM. Once you have all that, you're ready to get started. So for this tutorial, I'm starting with a fresh M0 cluster that I just loaded a sample data set into. So that's the one provided by MongoDB. Now for this, we're just going to use the sample restaurants database and we're going to be querying against the restaurants collection. So in this, you'll see some of our documents here. We have a list of restaurants that have the addresses, grades, the names and restaurant IDs. What we're going to do is we're going to load up some similar data sets into our Azure blob. Now, if we go over here, I already have the storage and container set up, but it's currently empty. So what we're going to be loading into this is a couple of sample documents. So first one, we just have example one. This is the JSON file and it's built following the same schema as our documents in our database. So our example one is just a standard JSON file. You'll see the document here matches the same schema as the documents in our database, but it's unique to the rest in there. Just It's just in on the Hudson or on Hudson. It has a unique restaurant ID. It's in the borough of Manhattan, has some cuisines, just so we have something to query against. As well as that, we're going to load in our example 2.csv file. So Azure Blob Storage can handle more than just our JSON BSON files. What we're actually going to do is we're going to load in some CSVs so you can see how you can query against these using the MongoDB query language, the same way you would just documents in your own database. This way you can mitigate having to deal with large data migrations if you have documents stored in another database that you still need to use, but aren't looking to transfer over. This file is in a familiar tabular format, but all of the different columns are following the same namings as our documents. So we'll be able to include these in our queries. Now, we need to look at how we're going to load these into our database. So to upload your files, you can use Azure Portal. You could use Azure PowerShell. For my case, I'm using Azure CLI. So I'm just going to go AZ Storage, and then it's Blob Upload. And then you're going to need your account name first. So account name, in my case, is just Silly Little Blob. And then after that, you're going to need your container name. So in my case, that is Blobby. Now, we're not done with this one yet. Next, you're going to need to give your file a name. So in my case, my file name, we'll just call it example1.json and then provide the path to the file. And then our file location is here. And if we hit enter, now if we pop back over to our database or to our Azure container and refresh this, you'll see I have example1. So I'm just going to do the same thing with example2. Now that we have Azure Storage and our MongoDB cluster set up, it's time to set up our federated database instance. So if you pop over to the side and select Data Federation, we're going to go down and we're going to create a new federated database and choose Setup Manually. So from here, we select Azure as our cloud provider and we can take the default instance name. Now what we're ready to do is add our data sources. So if we select Data Sources, we're going to stick with Azure for our blob storage and Next. So from here, we need to set up a service principle. Now in my case, I already have one set up, but if you don't, you just select Authorize an Azure Service Principle and choose Next. It will walk you through the steps on screen. If we hit continue, and from here, we just need to assign relationships. So again, for this, there's gonna be a couple of steps on screen for us to copy and paste into our terminal. So the first is we need our storage account ID. So to do that, we just copy this and we run it in a terminal. If I pop over to a clean one here and paste that, you'll see I get an ID here for my storage account. So if I paste this command into the terminal and hit enter, I'll have my storage account ID. I just need to copy that and then pop back over to MongoDB and paste it in. This will auto fill in the command to paste below. Again, if we copy this one and we just run it in our terminal again, this will create the role we need. And once we get this on our screen, we know we're ready to go. So for the storage container access for this one, I'll only need read only access. So I'll choose read only. I'll select my region. For me, I'm based in Ireland. And then I just need to choose the container name. So the name of our container, you'll remember, is Blobby. Once again, we're just going to copy this command and bring it over to our terminal. And if we paste this in our terminal, after a moment, 
it will pop up that everything has been created and we're ready to go. If we choose continue here, now we just need to decide or to define the paths inside our data source. So this way our queries can map appropriately to the data in our database, even though it's not being stored in quite the same format. So you'll see here, it gives us a description of the sort of query, the provider path, the file structure, and the results we expect. So far as we're just gonna pop over to our cluster, we're gonna to go to our silly little blob, our container and blobby, and our example CSV. And what we're able to do with this is we can just copy the URL here and we can bring that back to our federated database. So once we have everything set up here appropriately, what we're able to do now is we're able to select a path type. Now, depending on your application and the queries you're gonna be running, yours might be different from mine, but I'm just gonna choose any value for mine. And this will just affect our queries later on down the line. So if we hit next, and now we can see our container name here is ready as one of our data sources. So our next step is gonna be to set up the Atlas cluster. So again, if we just choose add data sources, Atlas cluster, we'll choose our cluster, which is cluster zero. This will take a moment just to retrieve. And once we have that, we'll pop down to the restaurants and we just need the restaurants in this case. So if we go down here, click next, and you'll see here, this is also available as one of our clusters. So if we choose all data sources, we have both of ours listed. So once we have these available as data sources to bring them into our virtual collection, what we need to do is we just need to drag and drop them over here to our federated database. This is everything you need to get set up with Data Federation. So once we hit create, we'll give this a moment to spin up and then we'll be ready to go. Now that our federated database instance is set up, it's ready to connect. Now there's a couple ways to do this. So a quick way I like to do to make sure everything's spun up properly is to just use compass. So if you go over here, you select compass and get your connection string. And then we pop over to the application compass. We can paste this in. We can change the password. And we connect like this. So once we're connected, you see your virtual database with our virtual collection. And in here we can view our documents. So the first one you can see is actually our example two, which is our CSV file. It sticks out a little bit just because of its different structure. And then below that we have our example one. This one's a little bit easy to spot as well because it's missing our underscore ID, which every document in a MongoDB database has. Everything is stored in the one collection. So if we wanted to query this, like any other database, we'd just be able to connect to this collection and run our queries against all of the documents stored across Azure and MongoDB. So I'm going to set up a quick JavaScript application to show you how to do this. So this is going to be a quick in console application that we can use to search by different fields in our documents. So we can search for different restaurants by the borough, we can search by restaurant ID, and we can search by cuisine type if we wanted. So to do that, we're just going to create an app file. We'll just call this app.js, keep it simple. And then if we open up our terminal, we're going to run the command npm init and then hyphen y. So this will just initialize our repository. After that, we need to install our MongoDB driver. So that's just npm and then install MongoDB. This will take a moment to spin up, but once we have that, we're ready to go. So first things first in our application, we're gonna to need to connect to our MongoDB database. So to do this, we're gonna set up a client first. So we're just gonna get a Mongo client. After that, we need to get our connection URL. So that's our connection string. So if I go const URL equals, and then this is where we'll paste our connection string. So we should already have our connection string from earlier. If I hit paste, and it's also important that I make sure to include my password. After this, we're gonna to need to set our database name. So if I go const db name, now in our case, if you remember from earlier, ours is called virtual database zero. And then our collection name, and this is virtual collection zero. Now after this, we just need to create our client with our URL. Perfect. Now we need to create a function that will search our database and it'll take an input string from the command line to search through the documents containing that string in a specified field. So to do this, we're just gonna create a function and we'll call this search database or search DB. Now this will need to take in the field name. So the field we're searching in and the value. So that's what we're actually searching for. So in this function, we're just gonna set up a try finally block. So if we do our try, and then after that, we'll do finally. Now, first things first is we need to actually await our client connection. So it's client dot 
connect. Next, what we're going to do is we're just going to let ourselves know that we've connected to the server. So we'll do this with the console log. Once we're connected to the server, we just need to specify our collection and our database. So we have that from earlier. So if we do const db equals client dot db and then our db name, and we're going to do the same for our collection. Now we need to set up a way to actually set up a dynamic query to test against our database. So to do that, we're going to start with a const and this is going to be a, our query. And if in this we specify a field name, we're also going to specify our search string. So to do that, we're going to use regex and we're going to call this our value. And after that, we just need to set options to I just so it is case insensitive. Perfect. So there's our query. And now we just need to run that against our data or against our collection. So if we set const found documents or found docs, and we say equals await dot or await collection dot find, and then we'll run our query. And we'll just put this to an array. After that, we can say console log. And then we can just say maybe returned and then include our found docs. So we can see what we got. After that is all run, we're just going to close our connection. So we'll call this async function and we'll just call it main. Now in this, the first thing we're going to need to do is take in our field name and we can just call this one process, take in our arguments from the command line and it will be the one in our second position in the array. So that will be arg2. Now we need to take in our search string. So that's going to be our value above. So if we call this just search, and again, it's process.argv. And this one is going to be position three. After this, we're just going to call our function from above. So that's our search DB. And we'll pass in our parameters. So our field name and our search. And then we'll just say dot catch and console error. Again, if you're building out a full application, you're going to want some more error handling than this, but this is perfectly fine for our demo. And after that, we're just going to say main.catch. And this will be again, we'll just say console error. Perfect. So once we have all this, we're ready to run our application. So if I make this terminal just a little bit bigger for us to read, and I'll say clear. So we have a bit more space to be working with. Now, first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to run node app.js and we're going to decide what fields we'll look by. So if we want to look for our example 2.csv, what we can say is restaurant ID. And then if you remember our ID from earlier, it is 403 and then 560 and then 30. Now let's we'll see if that's correct. If we just hit enter, we'll wait. So we're connected and there's our example 2.csv. Now we can check other ones. So if we want to search maybe by all of the restaurants in the borough of Manhattan, we could just go borough and then Manhattan. And if we run this here, it will return all of our restaurants in the borough of Manhattan. So there's a lot included here, but inside of all that, because it queries all documents in the virtual database as if they are just in the one MongoDB database, it will include everything in our Azure Blob storage combined with our MongoDB storage. Now, what this means is we're not just limited to simple queries. We could also run more complex queries and even a lot of aggregations. So there are some limitations on what aggregations run on a federated database. You can see which ones by checking out our documentation, which we linked below, but most aggregation operations will work on a federated database. In this video, you learned how to get started with Atlas Data Federation, integrating your data from MongoDB and Azure Blob Storage. Now you're able to unify your data across multiple sources and query using the MongoDB query language in real time. If you found this video useful, make sure to like and subscribe, pop over to our YouTube channel for more tutorials, or visit our developer center.